everybody so today i'm going to be showing a little continuation from a video I did the other day which was how to do player movement with godot so the other video showed how to use wasd to uh, move your character in a 3d world and so today i'm going to show how to add animations to that character in this case it's kind of a 2.5d character um, that way so it doesn't look as awkward it doesn't look like they're just floating across the land they actually look like they have some sort of walking animation and this works for any sort of body animation or dying animation or whatever you want it to be, right? So for this case, we're just gonna do walking because it's kind of you know the beginning, the step one of what we're gonna be doing. So this is our main scene again, and we're gonna go back to our um, our player instance node. So this is where the other video basically left off, about right here. We have the script, we have the sprite 3D, and now we're gonna basically add animation. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna find an animation sheet. Um, a lot of them look like this. This is the one I'm using. I got it online, uh, some open game art. So this person did a pretty good job. And as you can see here, each row is a different animation. So this is just kind of the idle animation. Um, the second one is some sort of roar. The third is the walking animation, which is what we're gonna be doing. The fourth row is the attack animation. And the fifth row is the death animation. So this is the sheet I'm gonna be using. You can use any one you want, but uh, this, this is for this example. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find that sheet, uh, put it in your Godot folder, and then basically just click and drag over to this texture. And that's gonna give you your uh, sprite sheet and your texture. And if we basically have these set for, which is what they're by default, gonna be about a one by one, um, you're gonna get this giant sheet when you first pull up. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna look at it and count how many rows and columns there are. So there's one, two, three, four, five rows, and there are 10 columns or in this case, vertical frames and horizontal frames. So there are five vertical frames and there are 10 horizontal frames. And that gives us um, this frame, or this each individual frame. So what we're looking at right now is frame 29. So that means if you count like this, 10, 20, all the way up to here, this is this frame right here, number 29. So uh, what we're gonna do is we know that the frames 20 through 30 are the walk animation, right? So we kind of looked at this, and this is uh, 20 through 30 right here. So this is the walk animation. So this is what we want to focus on. So we're going to set the first frame to 20. Now what we're going to do next is add a animation player. And we want it to actually be a um, child of the player node and not the sprite 3D node. So animation player. We're going to click right here on animation. We're going to go new. We want it to be walk. New track, property track. We want this to be part of the sprite 3D because that's what's going to be animated. And then we're going to do int frame right here. And this is going to create the animation player for us. So this is what we're going to use to create the individual animation. So sliding, whoops, sliding uh, the time back to the beginning, which is what you're going to want to do we're gonna start adding our animations, right? So it's at number 20, and every time we click this key, it's gonna add one, and then go to the next one over. So there's animation one, there's two, there's three, there's four. We wanna go all the way up to 30, and that completes our walk animation. So it may not be 10. If you have a really short animation, it may only be four frames. If you have a really long one, it could be you know 20 frames or 30 frames. But in this case, it's 10. And we're also gonna to want to if we play it right here, you can use this to play it, you can see it kind of cuts short, and that's because of this number right here. So we want this to be, let's just say 1.5, right? Um, and then we play it again, and it plays the full animation. Right, so that's all you have to do to load up your animation for your, for your script. Before you do any coding at all, you just gotta set this up real quick. So once that is all done, you're gonna go to your script which this is the exact same code I showed and explained in the other video, just with one new line. And the new line is this right here. This, so this plays the animation. Everything's the exact same minus this. So this plays the walk animation. What it is, is it's the dollar sign with animation player dot play and then walk, or the name of the animation. So it can be anything you want. And you're gonna add this to each individual um, if statement again. So see saying if A is pressed, flip the sprite to the direction that it's gonna go, so in this case left, the sprite then moves the direction left or begins to move that direction and then it plays the walk animation. But these happen so fast because it's code um, that you won't even be able to tell that one executes before another. 
So it turns the sprite left and it walks left basically while playing the animation. And down here you can see the exact same things. Um, just go in different directions, but you just want to have animation play walk, walk, walk. And you can add other animations if you want. Down here I added um, a fight animation. So basically if the space bar is pressed, it'll play the fight animation instead, right? So that is this really basic code. So when we go ahead and play it, we will test it to see that it works properly. And here's our character. And here's some going to the left. Here's some going to the right. And you see how there's just kind of awkward delay that he kind of stops. That means our timing for our animations off, right? So what we want to do is go ahead and exit out of the script, go back to our animation player, and we want to change this back to um, about 1.2 you know, in this case. And so looking at our 3D script again, we'll run it again. And maybe a little less, we got 1.1, um, just so like it cuts off right where we want it to be, right? And another thing you can do over here is the playback options. You can actually um, change the speed. So let's say you want it to go a lot faster, you can up to two, and boom, he walked a lot faster. Um, that just looked kind of awkward. Or if you wanted to go slower, you know, you do the exact opposite, you 0.5, and it'll play, and it'll kind of do it in slow motion. All right, but for us, the default numerical value of one actually works really well. So just testing it one more time, looks pretty good. And we're gonna play the script one more time to see if it looks a lot smoother now. And bringing this on up, center this on the screen. And to the left, right, it looks better. Probably toy with a little bit more, but the point is just kind of show that changing that value will help uh, make the animation look more or less smooth. And that's basically it. So that's just a really simple way on how to add animation to your character. If they're in a sprite sheet, so this will actually work the same, I believe, for 2D. Um, it's the same concept, but it's just a way to do it in 3D um, without having to do you know, more advanced things uh, for a full 3D model as it's just basically a 2D model right here with a 3D environment. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope this helped you out.